our conversations with the candidates continue. Tom Lydon coming to you from the Muffin House. Happy to meet for the first time Joanna French. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm really right. glad we get the opportunity to do this. Honestly, not just with you, but also with Amanda and with Tom. Just the yeah. chance for our town to get to know the people who are running for a position on the school committee a little bit better. Yeah. So thank you for the time. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. I'm, I was really excited that you reached out and had this great idea. So thanks for... Thanks for organizing it. And you were just saying that sometimes you're better with the one-on-one -on -one conversations <laughs> than you are with the group settings, correct? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a recovering introvert, um, <laughs> so the, this is my jam. <laughs> Having a one-on-one -on -one is where I, I can best connect, let's say. Good. I, I think one of the most intriguing things to me for any of you who yeah. are residents of this town, mm -hmm. parents of children who go to school in this town, all of a sudden you're a bit of a politician. That's gotta be a curveball. <laughs> yeah. So the essence of making that commitment to run yeah. and campaign, because yeah. there's three of you for two seats. Yeah. Walk me through that process of saying, okay, I'm gonna do this. Oh gosh. Um, so uh, we came to this decision, my husband and I, on Christmas, well, we've been planning and inching towards and making the decision and thinking about running and thinking about this being the next appropriate step of my engagement with the town. We were having a quiet moment right before the hustle of the holidays, and I said to Patrick, I said, we got to make a decision about school committee. And he said, without even missing a beat, I think you should do it. And then the very next morning, under the tree, he had already wrapped a gift for me, which was a book, a guidebook on how to run for elected office. And I was like, man, you are my partner. <laughs> That's great. So we, uh, you know, we, um, we've been thinking about, I've been thinking about this. Uh, I think that so much of our democracy happens at the very local level. I can be annoyed and upset and irritated or have feelings about what's happening in DC, but I can't really do that much about it, but I can make an impact here at the very local level. And when I think about what I've done in the community so far, this just is the next natural step for my service to the town. I will ask you about what you've done in the community mm -hmm. shortly, but not before I ask you, just for a little bit of background. So yeah. take us through the children you have, yeah. where they're at school, what you've experienced from the Westwood School District mm -hmm. in your time here. Yeah. So my husband and I moved here in 2018. We moved here for the schools, like so many other families. But our story starts a little bit before that. We had, I moved out here in 2001. Well, Patrick and I moved out here in 2001 for me to attend graduate school. We stayed here for 15 years. We started having a couple kids and we were really struggling with like the, the school question where we were living in Boston. We we're living in Boston public schools and we were really struggling with where's the right fit, where's the right match for our kids to go to school. And that decision brought us back to Ohio where we're both from to be closer to family, to have support a family, to have, you know, to, to make that decision about schools a little bit easier, you know, with family close by and where we both grew up and where we both felt was going to be our home. We didn't, as it turns out, Boston is our home. And we we felt the need to, you know, we felt the call to come back. Um, there's a song written about no, that, you know, like, <laughs> Boston, you're my Yeah, home. I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of truth to that. So, you know, but you know, Patrick and I moved out here when we were 20, 21. And so we were young. And we learned that actually this is where we have grown up. And this is our home. So we made the move back to cross country moves with kids. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, but when we were trying to figure out where to settle in 2018, when we came back, it was really what is the best decision we can make as far as schools go. So and you have two kids? Two boys. I have a boy, a third grader at Downey, and I have a Tim, he's a eighth grader at Thurston. Okay, so you're right in the thick of it. You're, you have a, a middle schooler and an elementary school yeah. student, and you're going to experience the high school yeah. experience here shortly. Yes, I can't wait. I'm excited. What have you done? You yeah. s very nicely teased yeah. that you've been involved yeah. in the town. Tell yeah. me and yeah. others listening what yeah. you have done. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we moved back here, we were, you know, all in, you know, volunteering on the things, doing the things. Patrick coaches all the sports. He's taught at Downey Mini Courses. He's done improv classes. He does improv comedy, so he's taught there. We've volunteered. And then um, I've been involved in the Thurston PTO uh, for the last few years, and that has really been a lot of fun. But I joined the PTO with a focus on how do we support our kids through the pandemic? So my experience, my middle school experience with Tim has been wholly through the pandemic. And so my joining and getting involved in the PTO has really been because I wanted to figure out a way that we could support these kids, our social and emotional health as they are navigating this pandemic. The energy of a middle school PTO is a lot of fun because the parents are all in for the kids. Like they don't need the social engagement to connect with one another. 
their their engagement with the PTO is really to focus all the energy on student engagement, student activities, how to help these kids also navigate. So coming out of the pandemic um, and having a lot of the COVID restrictions lifted, the PTO was able to really put our energy behind the social events, bringing these kids together and having safe, positive experiences for them so they can learn how to interact together again, how they can learn how to um, you know, be human and social together again, because they haven't really had oh, yeah. a lot of those opportunities. So while I can, and I do fully support the uh, decisions that the school committee made during the pandemic, in terms of uh, masking and distancing and, and all the things that we had to put in place because of, of safety for our community, now that those restrictions are lifted, I was, you know, kind of hit the ground running this year, wanting to make sure we bring those social experiences back mm -hmm. and have these kids engage with one another in a safe and positive way. So we brought back, for example, our Friday Night Fun series. The Friday Night Fun series I is a grade specific. <laughs> and then these, they ended. And then they ended. So these grade specific events um, were just social, you know, a fun night for kids to come to school. The Dean of Students, Ed Edward Walker, was huge in helping us get those off the ground. And it was just a fun night for the kids. But it was less about, I mean, like, I wasn't just throwing a party for the kids. I was really doing it with the intention of how do we support these kids' mental health and get them to engage and interact with one another in a safe and positive way. Let's talk specifically about the school committee, your understanding mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. how you think it functions now, how you'd like to see it mm -hmm. function moving forward, mm -hmm. and how you might fit into that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I understand that the school committee's job is to interpret policy, set policy, set the budget, approve the budget, and uh, hire and fire leadership across the district. But those are the three major things that it's responsible for. It also has a big responsibility to communicate out to the town and to the community, its policies, its decisions, the decisions it's making, the policies it's setting and how it's moving the town forward. Um, my role, what I, what I think I can bring to this committee is my strong communications background. I've got 20 plus years of communications experience. Uh, I've worked at MIT and Harvard in communications. I, I've seen the other side of this. I've seen what a good quality school system can produce in the students that attend schools like Harvard and MIT. So my communications background is really a skill set I think I can bring to this committee. How about the concept of working as a panel? That's mm -hmm. something I did talk yeah. to Tom about as well, that you're gonna be a party of five, yeah. and you have, you have a 20% vote in mm -hmm. that party of five. Take me through what you've learned about working together, because you're not all mm -hmm. always going to agree yeah. on any one topic. Yeah, I mean, I oversee a team, and I'm part of a six-person uh, director team at work um, at MIT, and we come to our decisions by hearing one another, talking through challenges, making sure to respect and understand each other's perspectives, and to ask hard questions, and to think about what is the perspective, what is the unique perspective that I have that I can bring to this decision and really push the committee to consider all angles. I think in my position on school committee, I think I can, you know, my, my goal in this campaign and my goal in joining the committee is to unify our town. We have a lot of opportunity coming out of the pandemic. We have a lot of opportunity with the new superintendent. We have a lot of opportunity uh, with the new teacher's contract settled. These things, we have a lot of optimism in the community. And what I hope to do is to bring those different perspectives together and help to move our community in a forward direction. What's your understanding of what's hot, what's next? Mm -hmm. What are the things that have to be done almost immediately upon being elected if you were to yeah. be elected? Yeah, I, I think the most important thing is to onboard our superintendent and to really introduce him to the community, to the priorities, to our value system, to what we hope to achieve over the next couple of years. And then I think encouraging him to work closely with our teachers because our teachers have really, they've really had a go of it. Mm -hmm. They've really had a it's tough run. The students. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and you know, Tim, the, our, our new superintendent who's coming on board, as um, the leader of that group, he has an opportunity to build some of that community, build back some of that morale. Everything from the pandemic to the contentious uh, collective bargaining agreement that we just went through, we have some work to do with our teachers. So I think really putting his energy behind building that community is gonna be a priority for the committee to see that happen. 
That would be my most immediate, making sure to appropriately onboard him and onboard the uh, new director of student services as well. Great overview. First of all, nice to meet you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank How you. How do people learn more? Where do they uh, follow you? Come your to journey? my website, Joanna, uh, Joanna for Westwood.com. They can also follow me on Facebook. My handle is uh, Joanna for Westwood SC on Facebook and Instagram, you know, all the handles, but all, all the all that information is on my website, as including my LinkedIn profile, which really gives you an overview of my professional skill set as well. Good stuff. Joanna, great to meet you. Nice good to luck. Meet you. Let's keep this all civil over these next couple of weeks. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I Let's just have a good, a good, I, I think having a good uh, campaign where people can clarify their views and make sure the community understands where they're coming from and what they hope to achieve is, a, is an important part of the democratic process, if you will. That is Joanna French. She is a candidate for the Westwood School Committee. You, of course, will be voting on April 25th. Don't forget, we also have that conversation with Tom Themistocles posted, as well as the conversation with Amanda Phillips posted. So a nice wide variety so you can get an idea of the three candidates and what they stand for. So Joanna, thanks very much. Thank nice you. meeting you. And thank you for listening to the Westwood Living Podcast.